uh, Zach and Abby. Could you all stand right over here? Give them a good hand right there. Also, missionary to Thailand, seated over here with my wife, is Miss Amy Richard. Could you give her a good welcome tonight? God bless you. Missionaries in the Philippines getting ready to make a field change to Lampoon, Thailand. Our missionaries, Bob and Susan Tevall, could you all stand? Let's give them a welcome tonight. God bless you all. I'm going to have my son Joel come, and he has an announcement he's going to make right now, if I can find him. And then Mr. Pearson, Justin, if you want to come, and uh, you have uh, some things that you would like to say. Again, uh, as, you, as we dismiss tonight, before we dismiss, we'll actually take up a love offering for this event and to kind of help cover some of the expenses. It is a free event, so if you don't feel led to give, that's fine. But uh, there is, as you can see, several thousand dollars of expense in this. So. I want your attention uh, for this announcement. Brother Pearson will come and go over just some things for the drama tonight. God bless you all again. Thank you so much for coming. You have made this evening wonderful for us. We are excited to announce something that has been in the works for quite a while. We've seen a couple other places do this. Um, but as many of you know, we, um, Brother Rick Horn was a former missionary of ours to the country of Thailand. And uh, he was sent out of our church, and he recently passed away, leaving a children's home in the hands of uh, another young man and his wife, and then also now the T-Vaults, who will be moving from the Philippines to Thailand. As a church, we want to be a blessing to those children who are really an extension of our church. And uh, that children's home, it takes obviously a lot of finances to uh, keep it going, keep the children fed and schooled and clothed. And so we are sponsoring what we are calling the Resolution Run on January 1st. And what it is, is it is a 5K walk run that we are calling it a 5K walk run for missions. And the reason, obviously, of the Resolution Run is because it is on the first day of the new year. So all of you who are setting your New Year's weight goals and limits and whatever else, this is a chance for you to get out and get a little bit of exercise, but then also to raise money for a very good cause as for the children of Thailand. And so that will take place on January 1st at 10 o'clock in the morning. We challenge you to invite your friends, invite your family members, uh, invite any neighbors that you might have that might run, walk, whatever. It's a 5K. There's a, regi there's a small registration fee that will cover the cost of a T-shirt, but then the, all of the proceeds from that will go directly to Thailand and working with that children's home. And so we've got a goal set. We're looking for some business people also to match any goals, that, um, any registration fees or stuff. And so we want to have a large offering that we can present to the children of Thailand, and we're excited about that. That'll be on January 1st at 10 o'clock. So start training now. Don't just show up and try to run 3.2 miles that day. So we're excited about it, and hopefully you'll join us that day. All right. Thank you, Joel. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Let me do this quickly. Is there anyone who does not have uh, the spaghetti plate at this point? Throw your hands up, and that'll help our servers right here, okay? It looks like we're getting those right now. Servers, if you don't mind just taking a look, keep those hands up nice and high so that we can see. Also, if you would be, uh, well, let's, let's wait just a minute, okay? That uh, one, two, three, fourth row right there. Looks like just about everybody else is good. Also, if you are interested in getting uh, a little bit more bread, you can throw your hand up as well, and those servers will take a look right there. Servers, if you don't mind, just take a look and uh, see maybe where some bread is needed because we have a little bit extra there. And thank you for your patience in coming in. We hope that you will be able to uh, see very clearly and have a great seat. Like Preacher said, very, very, very uh, good seats throughout the building tonight. And in just a moment, just so you're prepared, in just a moment, we will flip the lights off and the house lights, and the only lights that will be on will be these stage lights. And so your eyes will adjust very quickly. We have uh, blacked out everything around to make sure that there will be enough light for you to eat. So after just a few moments, your, uh, your eyes will adjust, and I know that you'll be able to see well enough. Thank you once again for coming. In just a few moments, once we have served everyone and our servers have found their seats, we'll turn off those lights, and I will come to the stage and give you just some program notes. If you don't mind, as you're eating, there is a program in front of you that will tell you just a few uh, simple things to help you better understand the program, 
And I'll start it off here in just a moment. We can have just a little bit of music as folks eat for the next couple of minutes before we turn off the lights. Thank you again for coming. Enjoy your meal and especially enjoy the program. Let's get hands up one more time if you do uh, need some more bread or are in need of food. Just throw your hand up right there. Sounds good. They're, they're looking for you. Thank you. I'm going to check one more time, make sure that anybody is not in need of anything. Anybody still needs spaghetti anywhere at all? Wonderful. I hope you're enjoying it. And anybody that didn't get breadsticks, if you wanted a little bit more, anybody anywhere? All right, great. We're going to get our servers seated, and we will start with the main attraction for the play.
Again, I'd like to thank you to, for coming to tonight's program. We're very excited about the missions drama this evening. Let me take, uh, draw your attention to the program notes, and obviously, if you've not already read them, I'll give you a little background of what's going to go on tonight. Before I do that, I would ask you this. If you do have a camera, if you would, please not use flash photography. Very difficult for the actors, and they will uh, certainly appreciate not having that flash go off in their eyes. Our story this evening takes place at a time when Thomas Walker, a veteran missionary, and his assistant, Amy Carmichael, are in desperate need of medical assistance and supplies right here at the Donavere compound. A young doctor, Jenny Hunter, comes to gain experience, uh, give assistance, but also to find some adventure and excitement. What she finds is a horrific lifestyle that many women and children are forced to endure. The question is, can she break the ties that bind her to the comforts of home and bind herself to the work, both spiritual and physical, of rescuing India's children. The drama class is pleased to present for you this evening, Binding Ties. I think Jalu's fever has broken. Good. I wish Neela's fever would have broken, Amma. Amy, Panama, I've just received a hand-delivered note from Dr. Hunter. Hand-delivered? Is she in the village? Has she brought the medicines? Yes, she is in the village, and she has brought the medicines we need. How long has she been here? Her note says she arrived sometime last week. Last week? Why didn't she notify us? She wanted some rest after her long trip from Bombay. She and her aunt and uncle have rented a bungalow not far from here. Couldn't she have sent us the medicines? Apparently, she did not realize the seriousness of our measles epidemic. Oh, Walker, this is hard. Little Indranella died yesterday. She might have lived if she had received proper medication last week. We cannot base our thoughts on what if, Amy. We have placed the lives of all the children here at Donavere into the hand of God. When a child dies, you must accept that death as an act of God's sovereign will. I know. Well, Dr. Hunter will be arriving sometime tomorrow afternoon. Is there a room ready for her? She can have my room. It will give her more privacy. You can move in with me, Panama. Good. That's settled. Now, I want you both to remember that Dr. Hunter is not a missionary candidate. She's here on a temporary basis only because we are in desperate need of medical help. We will all have a tendency to hold Injunila's death against her, but we must remember she did not realize the seriousness of our situation. What's the matter, Amy? I'm just not sure if we should accept workers who are not dedicated to the Lord's service. Well, 46 out of our 122 children are very sick, and our only nurse is on furlough. What else can we do? in time for tea. Didn't they, Edith? Oh, Clive, I can't possibly imagine why they would want to go motoring in this heat. I should have gone with them. 
Who knows what could happen to a young lady in a place like this? Oh, really, Margaret? Richard is very capable of taking care of Jenny. <laughs> I think I hear them coming. Oh, Richard, you know I'm not ready to form that sort of tie. Miss Doctor, or Doctor Miss, which do you prefer? Neither. Very well then, Jenny Hunter. Cupid has shot me clean through. The only balm that will heal my suffering is your pledge to be my wife. Oh, how sweet. Either didn't you hear? Shh. Lieutenant Richard Barclay, you're going to shock my aunt and uncle. After a week of listening to you two banter, I don't think anything would shock us now. I've only 12 hours left to get you to plant me your troth. Your tea, madam? Oh, just in time. Um, Jenny, dear, are you sure you want to go to Donovan Compound? Yes, Aunt Edith. <laughs> but, my dear, I've heard that Tamil Nadu district is the most miserable and squalid part of India. Come back up north to Bombay with us, where the amenities are more suited to English taste. Well, I've already given my word to Thomas Walker to get my medical assistance at Donovan for at least two months. What is that? The servants routed it again. I'll take care of it. Richard, can you understand what they're saying? Jenny, dear, don't ask any more questions. You have much to learn about India. In my two years here, I think my greatest trial has been to find servants who will work together. Oh, the same thing happens in England. Yes, but this is much worse. Religion and caste get jumbled up in it. Hindus hate Muslims. Muslims hate Hindus. Hindus won't mix with anyone outside of their own caste. It all becomes very troublesome in this horrid and absurd country. Edith, I've given that Muslim cook the sack. You'll have to find another one when we get back to Bombay. See, my dear, British India takes a great deal of getting used to. Jenny, I do want to talk to you about tomorrow. If you have changed your mind and don't want to go to Don of Yore, don't feel obligated to leave. I've given my word, Uncle Clive. I know that, my dear, and I admire your character for standing by it. But I want you to think seriously about what you're getting yourself into. That fight between the servants is a small sample of everyday life in India. <laughs> Uncle Clive, I'll be living on a peaceful mission compound. Jenny, there isn't any peaceful part of India. The natives are always trying to kill each other. The fools think they can shake off the power of the British Raj and govern themselves. You can hardly blame them for wanting to rule their own country. They've never managed to do it before. Their whole history is one succession after another. And the British are the most recent successors. Perhaps, young man. But we are different. We've taken on the white man's burden to give a sense of decency to this backwards country. Richard, you don't have to live here long to see the superiority of the Raj. After all, we British are made of finer clay. If the fools do manage to get their independence, there'll be massive religious wars. The only peace India will know will come after all the Muslims and Hindus have slit each other's throats. Clive, please, blood and gore are hardly fitting topics. She's got to get used to it, Edith. Death is a frequent visitor in India. Well, I've spent six years studying disease and death. I think I can get used to life in India. Good. That's the spirit I've admired in you. I've informed Thomas Walker that your stay is not to last longer than six months. Six months? Ginny, you said only two. Richard, please. While you are there, there's this woman I want you to observe. You don't mean that Carmichael woman. Yes. For half a dozen years now, she's been a source of trouble. Claimed to discover some temple cult, the Devadasa. The God Slaves. Good translation, young man. What is this cult? She says that they buy baby girls and rear them at the temple, that they are beaten and live under much cruelty. And you want me to see if there's any truth to her claims? I don't like the sound of it. Could be dangerous. Oh, come, Richard. An old maid missionary isn't going to murder me in my sleep. For half a dozen years now, several missionaries and British officials have tried to have her departed. But so far, Walker has protected them from this effort. I want to send someone I trust so I can finally put this matter to rest. Why not go after Walker? We can't afford to. The man speaks superb Tamil and has a thorough understanding of Indian customs. Well, Uncle Clive, I'm glad that you trust my judgment. Any young woman who has worked as hard as you to get in the medical profession must have some sense about her. Jenny Hunter, missionary doctor. <laughs> Maybe I'll write a book. I don't like it, Jenny. Why are you doing this? For the adventure and the excitement. But I will be stationed 500 miles away. Richard, if our feelings for one another have any depth, 
A separation will be good for us. Are you sure she will be safe? The mission compound is well established. She will be quite safe. Get a good night's rest, my darling. We're starting tomorrow. You're going to have your fill of adventure. Panama. Has Walker been in yet for his breakfast? No, Ama. He's checking the surgery. I'm afraid the termites are building a nest there again. <sighs> Beastly creatures. Good morning, Panama. Amy, you haven't brought that ill-trained dog to breakfast again, have you? No. He's having his breakfast in my room. Good. Last week you had those squirrels in here. Yesterday it was that mutt. Next week, I imagine you'll have a pet elephant. <laughs> Elephants are too dear to buy as pets. You know, Walker, your wife and I have often wondered if your intense dislike of animals doesn't display a slight defect in your character. I don't mind animals in their place, which is not at the dinner table. You know, I wonder if your gossiping with my wife doesn't display a weakness in your character. <laughs> don't be too severe with me, Walker. I saw your wife's letter come in yesterday. What did she say? The doctors insist on at least another two months of bed rest. It'll be a year before she can set sail for India. I'm sorry. I know how much you miss her. We all miss her, Dr. Walker. We could hardly manage her when both of you were gone on furlough. Well, thank you. Dr. Hunter has been here for two weeks. Is she settled in yet? She prefers Miss to Doctor. She says Doctor sounds too stuffy. Very well, then. Miss Hunter. The children love her. Our epidemic seems to have subsided. Yes, her skills as a physician and the medicines have done wonders. There are only 22 children left in the sick ward, and they are recovering. But you still have reservations. Do you think she is unconverted? I believe she's a Christian, but I do not think she's dedicated. Well, you know, in some ways, she reminds me of a young Irish girl I had to take in hand 15 years ago. How are we alike? I've never known anyone so keen as you were on excitement. Always fluttering about the compound, talking about burning out rather than rusting out. Yes, and I remember you shushed me by saying that should be as God wills. I didn't like you very much when I first met you. I know. I hope you've changed your mind. I changed my mind years ago. I don't know how I would have managed all these years without your patience and guidance. Well, try now to show patient guidance to Dr. Hunter. If she'll dedicate her life to God, she'll make a fine missionary. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I'm still trying to get adjusted to the dawn of your schedule. No need to apologize, Miss Hunter. I'm glad to hear that. Panama, go and draw my bath water. Sit down, Panama. Miss Hunter, we've neglected to explain our methods to you. While it is true that I am in charge here at Donavir, and Amy is my second in command, so to speak, we work with our Indian brothers and sisters as equals. We have no personal servants here. We all serve Christ together. Well, what about the Indian cook? We have hired a cook, because the rest of us are too busy to fill that chore. I have some free time now. I will go draw your bath water. And I must check on the children. Well, I didn't upset anyone. Amy and Panama do not let themselves take offense at such matters. How's the situation in the sick ward? Well, one of the girls gave me a bit of a fright last night when her temperature rose, but it's nearly normal this morning. Good. How would you like to get off the compound and see more of the village? Very much. I love the children, but I could use a bit of a change. Well, the Indians have a proverb. Children tie the mother's feet. Especially sick children. We'll untie your feet and let you make the rounds tomorrow with Amy.
could I help you roll bandages, Miss Hunter? Yes. I'm glad Walker suggested getting off the compound for a while. You've been working very hard. He knew you needed a rest. I'm also glad I'm going with you today. There are some questions I wanted to ask. Such as? Well, to begin with, one would scarcely know that any Englishman lived on this compound. It's so decidedly Indian. <laughs> John of was felt to mean Indian needs, not British needs. That makes sense. Then there's your dress. My dress? Years ago, I discovered my British clothes only distracted the little ones I was trying to reach. They listened much better when I wore a sari, and I discovered how much cooler and more practical Indian dress is. That was an extra blessing from the Lord. <laughs> you have such a quaint way of seeing the Lord's hand in the most ordinary events. Well, I believe his hand is in the ordinary as well as the extraordinary, don't you? I suppose so. That's done. Where are we going this morning? Our first visit isn't far from here. Our first visit is to a new convert. Her husband doesn't know that she's been converted. Is she afraid to tell him? Yes. It has been three weeks since I've had time to visit Selimal. Her youngest boy was having some trouble with his eyes. There she is now. Good day, Selimal. We were just coming to see you. Musa'ama, my husband must not see me speaking with you. He will be very angry. We won't stay very long, Selimal. I brought a doctor with me. Won't you let her look at your little boy? Hi, let's come over here. Very well. Salomal, Ravi wasn't this thin three weeks ago. Wasn't he even eating? All he does is cry and rub his eyes. I'm afraid he is suffering from ophthalmia. Three weeks ago, his cries were very loud. Now they're much weaker. And he won't eat? No, miss. Do you have the white sahib's medicine that will make him well? No. Nothing I have here will help him. The disease has progressed too far. We must get him to a hospital. No, that would break caste. My husband would never allow it. They may not be able to help him, but they could help ease the pain. If he doesn't start eating soon, he could die. But he might die at the hospital. To die away from home would break caste. There is a very good hospital not far from here. My husband would never allow it. Salma, are you willing to watch him suffer until he is blind or dead? But what can I do? Can I defy my husband and destroy my family and caste? If you are afraid of your husband, you can always come to Don of your for refuge. Dr. Walker will protect you. I cannot leave. My husband would never permit it. Then we must pray that God will change his mind. It is impossible. No, with God, all things are possible. Well, if something isn't done soon, this child is going to die. Miss Hunter, there's no more we can do here. Come, Ravi. Cry softly, little one. How could any woman be so heartless? She would rather watch her child die than break some foolish caste superstition. I thought you said she was a new convert. A new convert. She can't be expected to abandon immediately everything she has ever taught. But all this silly talk of caste. Caste isn't just superstition with the Tamils. It's their whole life. It's their dharma. What is dharma? Let's rest here for a moment. Dharma is like their religious duty. They have no hope of a good life when they are reincarnated if they do not fulfill their dharma in this life. So she can sit and listen to her child's ceaseless cries just to have an easy time in the next life? She also has her husband to worry about. When her oldest daughter expressed an interest in becoming a Christian, he was furious and threatened to beat her. She refused to change her mind in spite of his threats. Three days later, her body was found in a well. Didn't the authorities investigate? The Indian officials did, and it was decided that the Christians had cast an evil spell on her, causing her to kill herself. That's an absurd conclusion. How could they possibly offer it as an explanation? They can offer any explanation they want, if they are given a large enough bribe for doing so. I'm beginning to agree with my aunt. This whole country is absurd. I had better warn you. Our next visit will be just as trying. How so? We're going to visit an elderly Brahmin woman. 
Roman is the highest caste, and I'm afraid their snobbery goes far beyond anything the British aristocracy ever dreamed of. She will be very hard to treat because she refuses to take anything in powder form. Well, then how can I possibly treat her? My most powerful medicines are in powder form. If you have a clear liquid or something she could rub on herself, but remember not to touch her, or she will be defiled. It isn't the child stealing Musil Amma. <coughs> <coughs> Have you brought the right medicine for me this time? <coughs> None of your others have worked. I have done better than that. I have brought one with me who is skilled in Western healing. I'll need to examine you. Do not touch, touch me! Bring me the doll. <coughs> Very well, then. Where does it hurt? <coughs> there. Okay. And have you been coughing up blood? Yes. Well, from the sounds of her breathing and her other symptoms, I would say you are correct. It is consumption. Have you brought me the right medicine? Musa Amara, give it to me unless I convert to her religion. Hardly think, Miss Karma. Do not speak impatiently with me. Do you not know that by helping a Brahmin, you look for a merit in the next life? What is in that bottle? Medicine that will help you? Let me see it. It looks clear. I do not see any of your powders floating in it. Well, it may not cure you, but it will help ease the pain. Miss Alma looks at me with strange eyes. <coughs> I know your thoughts. You would give me medicine for my soul. You have said it many times. Oh, yes. And by means of this medicine, my soul would gain its health? Yes. And how does one drink this soul medicine? By listening to the word of God and believing it. One receives this medicine. So the medicine is received through the ears instead of the mouth and is absorbed into the heart instead of the digestive organ? Yes, you've got it quite clearly. There is nothing else to do? You have only to let the words catch. Then your heart believes, and your soul comes to its health. So this is how you delude me? By getting me to eat your powder mix in this medicine? And by telling me your book's words which will affect my heart? Go! You have no medicine that can cure my body. And I want none that can cure my soul. Do you think I have borne the contamination of you who eat meat and mingle with the untouchables for the sake of your soul looting book medicine? Go! I have no use for you, and I have no use for your God! Hunter, add another caste to India's already overburdened system? Tell her that a British Raj can trump a Brahmin. No, but a quarter of an hour ago, you were incensed by the injustices of the caste system, yet now you want to me to invoke my Raj privileges? No, Miss Hunter. If we are to win these people, it will be by being servants to our fellow men, not by being Raj. <laughs>
Jenny. Finally, it's been three weeks since we left her at dawn of yore. She apologizes for that, says she arrived in the middle of a medical crisis on the compound. She hardly had time to sleep, no time at all for letters. She wants us to tell Richard Brockley that he'll get a letter soon. Stop capsulizing the thing, Margaret. Let me read it. Everything here is so Indian. The missionaries wear Indian dress. They eat Indian food. Their houses follow Indian design. Miss Carmichael is always talking about the charm of Indian life. Well, I have yet to see it. All around me, I hear the strange gibbering of the Tamil language. How my ears ache to hear English at times. I would love to sit in your comfortable parlor having proper English tea. Oh, the poor dear. I am training one of the Indian workers as a nurse. Her name is Panamal. She catches on quickly, which is surprising for a native. I like her well enough, but she has the most disconcerting way of asking personal questions about spiritual matters. I suppose I must get used to it, though. It's the way all of the missionaries talk. Well, look at this. Uncle Clive, I've seen about a dozen children here who were reportedly saved from a life of service in the temple. Most of these are under the age of two. I've had no time to interrogate anyone about them. We've been so busy. I'll keep you informed as time allows. I'm tired, but far from boredom. I hate boredom. I love you all, Jenny. I wish she could have discovered more about that temple issue. Clive, she's done enough. Write her and tell her to come home. Certainly not. This is the best practical experience I still get as a doctor, and I'm not going to call her home until she's sick of adventure. Be sure to grind the pills carefully into the mortar. That way, they dissolve better, and the villagers won't think we're giving them magic powders. Yes, Miss Jenny. This procedure is such a nuisance, but I'm determined to get good medicines into your people. Now that I know how, I can do this work to save you some time. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Hunter, but Chalalu has had a nasty fall. Oh, let's come over here. This may sting a little. Amy, do you know anything about these scars on your hands? The temple women did it. What? They wanted to tie me to the god. Tie her to the god? It's a kind of ritual they have, binding the children to a lifetime of temple service. What sort of service do the temple people expect from small children? Many cruel things, most of which are unspeakable. I thank the Lord we were able to get her out, even though she had already been initiated into the Devadasa. I heard the Devadasa was rather like an orphanage. Oh no, Miss Jenny, they are very cruel. But don't they take unwanted orphans? Only if the children are pretty and healthy. Mama, he has done it. She was able to slip out of the temple with a little girl. God bless you for your courage, Kia. I could not stand what they were doing to her. I had to help. What is your name, little one? Leela. Jenny, I want you to give her a thorough examination. There will be trouble over this, and I do not want the authorities blaming Donavir for any physical abuse she may have suffered at the temple. Oh, you poor child. There are scars all over her back. This is from a recent beating. Panama, give me the ointment. There, this will make your back feel better, sweetie. Why were you beaten, Leela? He said I was too clumsy. Panama, I want you to keep a complete journal of any injuries you may find and record the child's explanation of those injuries. If we are forced to go to court to keep her, I want every bit of evidence we can get to convince the authorities that she should stay here. Will the temple people come and take her back? I don't know, Chalalu. We'll have to pray about it. Will they take me back? No. Your parents have given us permission to have you here. I don't want to go back. Don't worry. Why don't you go help with some of the other children? Yes, Alma. We'll have to guard the compound gate tonight, just in case. Where are they? 
Where are the white sahibs who steal children? Quickly, Kia, go with Chalalu. I don't want them to know you brought her to us. You are the missionaries who have kidnapped the child Leela from the temple. We have done no such thing. A village woman brought her to us because she cannot bear to see how she was being abused. What woman? We won't tell you that. You have no right to the child. She was dedicated to the goddess Kali by her own mother. She belongs to the temple. Do I don't want to go back. I want to stay here. It's okay. I'm a doctor. I examined Leela when she was brought here. She had scars all over her back from recent beatings they've given her. We do not beat children. Perhaps these sahibs have beaten her. She just came to us. If we had beaten her, she would still be bleeding. Well, perhaps her mother beat her. She said she was beaten at the temple, and I believe her. No, I don't want to go back. What temple does she represent? Amma, we must not let that woman touch Leela. Why? They have strange ways, drugs, hypnotism. If she touches her, the child may agree to return. speak to her in my own way. Let the child go to her. No. Why? Are you afraid that she will escape your magic if she comes to me? Very well. Amy. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Ah, uh, little one. Do you know what will happen if you stay here? They will take away your pretty clothes and give you rags. They will take away your pretty jewels and give you nothing. Come back with me and I will give you new clothes. I will give you new jewels. You will be the most beautiful child in the temple. All who see you will love you. Kali will love you. Come back with me. My uncle is Colonel Clive Strickland from Bombay. He is a very powerful sahib. Let her take Leela. I will write to him and report to you. If the child wants to stay, I will let her stay. Coward! Do not think you have won. There are laws in India that even the Raj cannot break. I will write to the child's mother, and she will demand that the child be returned to the temple. The curse of Kali on you all! little girl coming along. Miss Jenny. We finished a little early today and Miss Jenny wanted to check on Leela. Wow, the scars have healed nicely. I can hardly see them. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Leela's been working very hard in her studies. Miss Jenny, I can say John 316 all by myself. What a bright little scholar you are. Children, it's almost time for supper. We'd better get washed up. Cook doesn't like it when we are late. Miss Carmichael's just a regular Pied Piper. Pied Piper? Oh, it's a character from a fairy tale story. I do not understand. It's my sense of humor, I guess. Many times, I do not understand your sense of humor. Well, I suppose I do joke more than I should. I'm sure the fault in understanding is all mine. But there is still one more thing I should like to know. What is that? I know what Dr. Walker and Amma mean when they speak of winning India, but I do not know what you mean by that. I suppose I mean bringing order, helping your land to become prosperous. 
shall I explain to you how England has helped India's prosperity? For centuries, India had grown cotton and woven it into good cloth. However, now England has us send our raw cotton to British mills. Then we must buy the cloth the English weave to clothe ourselves. India would be much more prosperous if we did not have to pay the British for what we can do quite well ourselves. I know that some of our laws may seem unfair, but we've helped restore order in India. Look at the railroads we've built. Yes, the railroads have been a great help to my country, but only the British are allowed to travel in the best circumstances. We Indians must accept the lowliest accommodations. What is your point, Ponomal? Dr. Walker and Amma understand my country and respect it. They have not come to convert us to British culture. They have come to convert us to Christ. But Christianity is the foundation of British culture. I think not. For if it were so, I would sense more of the love of Christ in the British. But I have sensed it in very few, except for Dr. Walker and Amma. Miss Jenny, come quick. Miss Hunter, Connemal, Captain Stryker is here. He's come for Leela. You're not taking her away. Will she be sent back to the temple? Is Thomas Walker here? No. He's in Mesulipatam, holding evangelistic meetings. Pity. What's to become of Leela? Her parents have notified the British authorities that the temple people are to be made Leela's official guardians. Why? It seems that the mother has taken some sort of religious oath, dedicating the girl to a goddess that her oldest son might be healed. I'll come to take her back. No! She can't go! I'm a doctor. I examined Leela when she was brought here. She's been beaten from the temple. If you return her, her life could be in danger. What proof do you have that she was abused by the temple people? She said so. Children say many things. Chelalu is another little girl we rescued from the temple. She has also told us of abusive treatment. The testimony of two children is not going to override the express wishes of Leela's parents. There is a woman in the village, Kia. She once worked in the temple. She can tell you what will happen if Leela is returned. Yes, we are familiar with Kia. She has been brought before the authorities for petty theft, perjury, and the like. But that was before she was converted to Christ. In court, her reputation makes her an unreliable witness. Surely you are not going to take her away. I am bound to carry out the law, and the law demands that Leela be returned to the temple. Unless you can give substantial proof that Leela or any other child is being abused, I have to take her back. My uncle- I know, miss, but that has nothing to do with the case at hand. Now will someone take me to the child? I will. I'll go with you. This can't be happening. What are we going to do? Walker will return in three days. He knows the Indian law is better than the Indians. If there's a loophole that will allow us to keep Leela, he will find it, or he'll know someone who can. Walker will sort this out. We must pray. Amma, a telegram from Masula Patam. Thank goodness. Dear Lord, what does it say? Walker was stricken two days ago with tomain poisoning. He died this morning. Remember, Kia, you are to do nothing that will put yourself in danger. Yes, Muso Ama. Is there any hope of slipping Leela out of the temple? Not now. She's being too closely watched. I am afraid that some of the priests suspect me. They will not let me near her, and they will tell me nothing about her. Try to check on her once a day, if you are able, but be very careful. I will. But you must be also. The temple women have cursed you in the name of Kali. 
The curse of Kali is a very fearful thing. Many have died. Kia, we serve the greater God. Kali is helpless against the servants of the Lord. We must go now. I just wish I could get to Leela and take her where no one would hurt her. Not those temple people, not her wretched parents. I received an answer to my last letter today. From Leela's mother? Yes. What did the mother say? Her oldest son has recovered. The goddess has honored her gift of Leela. If Leela is returned, the goddess will surely take revenge on the rest of the family. The people and their ridiculous religion! We must be patient with them and pray. I have prayed. I've prayed for Leela and for the woman with the little blind boy. Yes, but a month has gone by and nothing has come of it. Prayer isn't a short-term assignment. I know. Sometimes a year can go by before a prayer is answered. But Leela and that little boy, they haven't got years. I suppose you're going to rebuke me now for my lack of faith. How can I rebuke you when I have felt the same way? You? Right after Walker died, my praying seemed pointless. All I could do was pour out my despair to God. Who would run Donavir? How could I write to Walker's wife and tell her of his death? What could I do for Leela? But in the weeks since, I've had a greater sense of the Lord's strength in my life than I've ever known before. I better get back to the surgery. I left Panama with five sick babies. Jenny. I know you haven't been feeling well. Please try to get some rest. I will, Alma. Uncle Clive, thank you for trying to intervene on Leela's behalf. Amma is still trying to convince the parents to take Leela out. The British legal system must do something to end the Devadasa. Donavir has, has had, had a strange effect, effect on me. me. My comfortable God only once a week on Sunday religion just won't work here. Sometimes I think that God wants more from me than I am prepared to give. My headaches are getting better, so please don't worry about my health. My, my love, love to you both. both, Jenny. It's time to call her back, Edith, before the pressure of that missionary turns into a religious fanatic. Write her and tell her to come back to Bombay at once. That won't work, Clive. Why not? She's formed a strong tie with that Carmichael woman. Didn't you notice? She called her Amma, mother. Well, what are we supposed to do? Send for young Barclay. Get a leave for him and send him to Donavir. We'll need the combined call of home and love if we're ever going to get her away from there. I don't know. Barclay leave isn't easy. You have the influence, Clive. Use it. I tell you it's the only way we're going to get her home. Jenny. Richard, I didn't expect you. How did you get leave to come? Your uncle had a hand in it. What are you reading so intently? The Bible. Oh, how very missionary of you. Please, Richard, let's not exercise our rapier wits on one another right now. Do you realize we've never talked seriously? I was always afraid that you would cast me off if I did. Perhaps it was my fault that all we ever did was try to match wits, but it isn't fitting here. These past few months at Donavir has shown me that life is too dear to spend it perpetually bantering with someone that you care for. Care for? I was hoping that you could say love. I don't mean to disappoint you, but I'm still trying to sort out what I want to do with my life. Before Thomas Walker died, 
He told me he thought I would make a good missionary. Missionary? That's absurd. I'm not going to stand by and let you waste your life in this hovel trying to doctor savages who will never appreciate the sacrifices you are making for them. This isn't a hovel, Richard, and the children are very appreciative. I can't believe I'm talking to the same girl I knew four months ago. What kind of influence have you allowed these missionaries to have over you? It isn't the missionaries, Richard. It's God. I want to know what God wants for me. Make me your mission field. Come back to Bombay, marry me, and work on converting me. Heaven knows I could use a little religion. Please don't turn this into a humorous monologue. All right, I'll be serious. Look at yourself. You're pale and way too thin. You look worn and tired, and you've been suffering from severe headaches and sleepless nights. How did you... Oh, I know you didn't want me to find out about all that, but your aunt told me. You're a doctor. Diagnose yourself. Are you in any condition physically to seek out your life's work? Perhaps not, but... Come back to Bombay and give yourself a chance to recuperate. Jenny! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a visitor. Lieutenant Barclay, we're glad you could come visit. Thank you. We were about to start prayer meeting for Leela. You asked me to come and get you? Miss yeah. Jenny! Kia? Miss Jenny, come quick. I have brought Leela. She is badly hurt. Where is she? In the surgery. Ponamal needs your help. I'm coming with you. Please, Lieutenant Barclay. Jenny has trained Ponamal to be a superb nurse. You and I would only be in her way. But I want to help. The best way you can help is by guarding the gates of the compound. Priests may come to take Leela back. All right. Kia, what happened? I did as you asked. I went to the temple every day to see how Leela was. The temple women were angry with her because she would not worship their gods. She would only talk about Jesus. The priests heard of this and got very angry. They threatened to beat Leela. But then they thought of a better way to punish her. They said if she would not worship, they would give her to Krishna Das. Who is Krishna Das? A very rich man and very cruel. All of the temple women are afraid of Krishna Das. Go on. Well, earlier this evening, when Krishna Das came to the temple, they sold her to him. He wanted her to bow and to dance for the gods, but she said no. She said her god would not be pleased. So he beat her. When I found her, she was bleeding very badly. But one of the temple women took pity on her and helped me bring her here. Where is the woman now? Gone. I, I must go too. Mama! There is too much blood. There is nothing I can do. There is nothing I can do. Sorry, I know you want to be left alone, but there is someone here you must see. Salma, the little boy, he can see. Yes, two days after I saw you in the marketplace, I prayed to God for some way of getting Ravi to the hospital that you spoke of. That night, Ravi's cries were very loud. My husband grew angry. I thought he would beat me, and he told me to take Ravi away. I asked him if I might take Ravi to the hospital. And he said that he didn't care as long as I took Ravi away. Well, his recovery is remarkable. I walked all night and the next day carrying my child. And when we got to the hospital, Ravi was very sick. I thought he would die. So I prayed again and asked the Lord to spare my child. I promised God that Ravi would be trained to serve him. And now you see God's answer. Salamal and Ravi are on their way to Masulipatam. They're going to live with a missionary family there. You're not staying? No, I'm afraid that my husband will change his mind now that Ravi is well. He may forbid me to have him trained as a Christian. The ox cart is waiting, Salomal. I must not stay. I want to show Miss Jenny that Ravi is well. 
Come, Robbie. Isn't that wonderful? Don't. What? Don't. You can't diminish Leela's death by showing me Salomon, her son. Jenny, for two days, you've shut yourself in here without eating or speaking to anyone. Lieutenant Barclay has been very worried. The children don't understand why they can't see you. Please, don't grieve alone. Let me help. Why did this have to happen? Why did she have to suffer like that and die? I can't say why. I can only say perhaps. We immediately reported everything to Captain Straker. He has already arrested several temple priests and notified top British authorities. Perhaps this had to happen so that we would have the proof we needed to show the British officials that something must be done to stop the Devadaza. But did the proof have to come at such a cost? We must trust God for that answer. No, I can't do it. I can't trust God the way you do. You don't have the strength. Jenny, I don't rely on my own strength at a time like this. I ask God for strength, and he gives it. He'll give it to you, too. You have only to ask. I just want to leave this place. I know you had only agreed to come on a temporary basis, but your work here has been so good. I thought you might consider staying. I had considered it, but after Leela, I couldn't. Naturally, you're upset. I, I feel as though Leela's death has stripped me of some sort of spiritual veneer. And now, I stand before God, and I cannot bear his gaze. God doesn't want only an outward show of spirituality. He wants our hearts and souls. In his mercy, he sends us affliction to show us when we are self-deceived about our motives for service. I don't know. Perhaps God may be using this tragedy to help you sever your ties with the world and bind your heart closer to him. And what then? If I stay, I'll have to endure the turmoil of a dozen tragedies like Leela's. I don't want that. I want to be happy. But can't you see? True joy comes from God. No. I had started to love this place, but now I have a horror of it. Please reconsider. Tell Lieutenant Barclay I wish to speak to him. Very well. Jenny, I heard some noise. You heard the cart coming to get us. You're leaving? Yes, and we have a long journey back to Bombay. But it's so early. The sun isn't even up. I felt the sooner we got started, the better. Won't you stay a little while? The children will be up soon. They will want to say goodbye. I think it will be better for her to leave before the children are awake. They will miss you, and so will we. Tell them I love them, and I will miss them too. I'll take this out to the cart. Don't be long in saying goodbye. You're not taking very much. Will you be returning? No. You may take the rest of my things and sell them or distribute them among the poor as you see fit. If you ever change your mind and wish to return, you'll always be welcome here. Thank you. Goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye. Lieutenant Barclay is waiting. I must go. We shall never see her again, Amma. I know. 
Last night, she closed her heart and mind to God's call. Good morning, little gems. I'm hungry. How about some tea? Chalu, would you go get her some? Amma, do you think Jenny will be happy? Happy enough as the world counts happiness. She'll have a fine home, many friends, and social position. But when she meets the Lord and has shown all the children she might have helped, what do we do now? We pray that the Lord will send us workers who are willing to bind themselves to his service. Come, we have much work to do. Amy Carmichael served in India for 56 years without furlough. To this day, more than 50 years after her death, the Donover compound still serves as a refuge for India's untouchables. Amen. In just a moment, we'll meet our cast. Well, let me ask you to bow your heads for just a moment. And powerful message in this drama presentation. And of course, our young people did well, but the Lord is working in several different ways tonight. First of all, there's no doubt that He is working in the hearts of our actors. You could tell that they poured themselves into that. But he's working in this place too. And just got to ask yourself the question and wonder what it would have been like if the doctor had stayed and served out her years there. Everybody has a choice. She knew Christ. She'll go to heaven just like anybody else. But, you know, after the Lord saves us, he leaves us here to serve him. And that's really the heart of missions, service. Several different quotes were made there, but one where she wrote home and said, my Sunday morning religion just won't work here. And I want to tell you what, it doesn't work in America either. But you know, a lot of people are content with just Sunday morning religion. If you're here and you know Christ is your Savior, you ought to thank the Lord for that person who told you about Jesus, for that church, that preacher, that soul winner, whoever it was. And right now, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I must ask you that question tonight. If you were to die tonight, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? The Amy Carmichael story is a true story of a missionary who won souls in the deepest part of India. But there are folks winning people to Christ here too. And I will tell you that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you ever go to heaven, it will be because you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. With heads bowed, or eyes closed, and no one looking around, I want to ask you this question today. If Jesus Christ would take you right now just as you are, would you take him as your Savior tonight? If you'll pray a prayer something like this, Lord, I realize I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe that you were buried for three days, and I believe you rose again in your life right now. Lord, I ask you to forgive me my sin and make me a Christian tonight. If you'll pray that this evening and mean that, you can be a born-again Christian. 
I want to pray that one more time. If you're saying in your heart right now, I'm not sure that I'm saved, but I need to get that pinned down. The Lord is coming back, and I think that everybody in this room, saved and lost, I think you know that this world is shaping up for a new leader. And that leader will be Antichrist here on this earth. But Christians are getting ready to follow their leader home. And here's the prayer again, if you've never prayed this in a minute, if you're not sure that heaven's your home, here it is again. I want to challenge you to pray this right now in your heart. Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe that you were buried for three days, and I believe that you rose again on the third. And you're alive right now. Lord, I ask you to forgive me my sin and make me a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's a promise. The Bible says, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, if you pray that prayer, and our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and no one's looking around, right now, if you prayed that prayer, would you just let me see your hand tonight? You prayed that, you meant that, just put up high. Let me see your hand tonight. I prayed that prayer, preacher. God bless you. Anybody else? Thank you. God bless you. Anyone else? I prayed that and I meant that tonight. Thank you. Put your hands down. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else? Don't want to don't hurry. I want to see anyone else. I prayed that prayer. I meant that. I wanted to be a Christian. You know, the wonderful thing about being a Christian in America is at this point in time in history, we wouldn't have to sacrifice like some of those Indian converts did years ago. People in the world are taking their stand right now, some sacrificing their lives. Eighty, Eighty people were executed in North Korea just last week. Many of those were Christians because they received a Bible that were airdropped into them. And the governments brought them out in the streets and executed them in front of the other citizens in that town. I'm thankful for America. We're leaving our roots. Nights like tonight helps us to refocus. I want to ask one more question. As we enter into this missions conference, how many of you would say, Preacher, during this conference, I'm going to ask what the Lord, I'm going to ask God what He would have me do. Now, before you raise your hand, I understand that there will be a lot of emphasis placed on world missions, and it may be that God would lead you to do more for missions, and I hope that He does. But mission starts right here at home in Murfreesboro. And tonight, I want to say this, preacher, tonight, starting tonight through this week, I'm going to ask God to show me what more I can do to reach others for Christ. You say, that's me. Would you put your hand up? Put it up real high. God bless you. Many hands raised. Thank you. Put your hands down. Now, tonight, I'm going to ask Brother Pearson to come, and he's going to kind of give you a little instruction about how we'll dismiss, and we'll meet the cast here in just a moment. But let's have a word of prayer. Father, so many hands were raised. We thank you for these who lifted their hands just a moment ago that said that they had prayed the sinner's prayer tonight. And now, according to the scriptures, not according to me, but according to your word, they're now a born-again Christian. Lord, I'd love to be able to talk with them, and I'll make myself available to them, and I pray they'll slip my way. And, Father, that they'll tell somebody about their decision tonight. I'd love to know myself. I pray they'll follow you, Lord, and live for you and be in church and have a desire to be baptized now and move forward in their life. And then for the other hands that were raised, Lord, I pray for these who are going to sincerely seek your face about what more they can do for you in service to you. Thank you for this true story tonight. And I pray you will move us and challenge us and stir us, please. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's people said, Amen. I'm going to have Brother Pearson come. Let's meet the cast, Brother Pearson. All right, if we can have the cast come on out, and they have worked very, very hard. Why don't you give them a great hand? They just keep coming.
one of those awkward moments when uh, teenagers aren't sure exactly what to do. We appreciate so much their hard work, and I want you to know that they do uh, most of their practicing after school and at different times where most other kids maybe are home or doing other exciting things that they want to do. These kids have put in a whole lot of hard work. This week, they got a lot of time out of school, but that's about the only time. And so one more time, why don't you guys take one more bow and uh, just acknowledge the crowd that they've come, and you guys can head on back. And we'll certainly appreciate that. I believe that the uh, ushers uh, do have a, uh, a large bucket right there. Maybe our